Hey, what's up YouTube? Here with another review for you guys. Today I'm going to be reviewing Headlopper number four. You guys might be asking yourselves, what in the world is Headlopper? Headlopper is a quarterly adventure comic drawn by Andrew McLean with uh, colors by Mike Spicer. This has been one of my favorite books this year. Our hero is a man of many names. Son of the Minotaur, the Executioner, Headlopper. But he prefers to be called Norgal. And Norgal carries the still living, still talking, constantly nagging head of Agatha the Blue Witch, who is our comic relief during this story. The story takes place on the island nation of Bara. Now Bara is ruled by a toddler king and his lady mother. Their country has been overrun by monsters and what they've come to call the Plague of the Beasts. Just to recap, arriving by ship, our hero encounters a leviathan in the waters of Castle Bay, and he promptly removes its head. Slaying the beast garners him a reputation in Bara as a total badass. He's not there long before he slays a pack of giant wolves who are pursuing uh, Lolik, the steward of Bara. Lolik then convinces the queen that Norgal should be the one to deal with the Plague of Beasts. How's he going to deal with the Plague of Beasts? At its source, by removing the head of the Sorcerer of the Black Bog. And off they go, not knowing that the steward is in league with the Sorcerer, and that it's all a plot to get Norgal to bring the magic that resides within Agatha's head right to his feet. Now along the way, Headloppers fought numerous foes, from ghosts to zombie giants, and two sister green witches who were hooked on smoking dust. And Agatha has kept me laughing all the way as she constantly pokes, prods, and prattles on about whatever nonsense she can to annoy the headlopper. Now we come to the fourth and final issue of this story arc as Norgal is finally approaching the Black Bog and heading unwittingly into the hands of the sorcerer. Issue four gives us a flashback from the king's point of view as the steward, Servant Lulik, murders the king. And it also gives us the backstory of the sorcerer. Apparently he was a jealous god who demanded too many sacrifices. So he was banished to the Black Bog by the benevolent goddess, Venora. And his one singular goal is to break free of his bonds of imprisonment. With this knowledge, Norgal now has to deal with Lulik and his men, as well as slay a god. No problem for Headlopper. We get an intense sword fight as the sorcerer Bera takes on the form of a swordsman to beat Norgal at his own game. Then Bara consumes Agatha's head and takes her power. He uses that power to turn into a gargantuan three-headed beast, a la King Ghidorah. No sweat, Norgal jumps into his throat, does a little whirly gig sword move and decapitates him from the inside. Agatha's magic then explodes, destroying Bara once and for all. And after all that, Norgal has to contend with Lulluk and his men, who want the head of Agatha the Blue Witch. But it's Norgal who takes their heads instead. They don't call him Headlopper for nothing. The story comes to a close with Norgal laying the head of Servant Lulluk at the feet of the king. He announces that the sorcerer has been vanquished, and this brings an end to the Plague of Beasts. This was a fitting end of the story arc, with all the loose ends being tied up neatly in a nice bow. We got to see the full character art of Lulluk taking his revenge on the king, and eventually betraying his master on his quest for power. And we got Bara's origin story, and the cause of the Plague of Beasts. It was paced well, and packed full of action. It also serves the character of Norgal very well, as it brings this story to a conclusion, while allowing him to go on to further adventures. The art in this book is consistent to the rest of the series, in saying that, I'm saying, it's fucking awesome. Andrew McLean has a style that I can only describe as Mike Mignola meets Gendry Tartakovsky on Mushrooms. Highly stylized and imaginative character designs with textures and movements that jump right off the page. The colors by Mike Spicer are a perfect complement to McLean's style and add mood and depth to the books. If that's not enough, this book is packed full of five fantastic pinups in the back. This is one beautiful book. Overall, Headlopper number four is a gorgeous and fitting ending to the story arc of the island, while maintaining the quality that I've come to expect from the title. This is a five and a five. Buy this book.
If you guys can't find Headloppers 1 through 4 in your local comic book shop, you can wait until October when they will be releasing a trade paperback. The first volume is going to be jam-packed with extras and brand new material from Andrew McLean. Also, apparently we're getting Headlopper Volume 2, and that's going to come out around February of next year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Guys, go out and get Headlopper as soon as you possibly can. I cannot recommend this book enough. Headlopper number four. Five out of five.